Hello and welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me in this Evolve Artist student vlog, a place where I talk about my art journey specifically with the Evolve Artist program and express my feelings and experience. I really appreciate you lending an ear while you create or go about your day. This is episode 9. Please feel free to check out the other videos. I'll have a playlist linked down below. Hey YouTube, it's been a while. In my last video, I was hoping to be at least halfway through block three while editing this video, and I'm currently on block three, assignment 11. I've been distracted with my life in general and just enjoying my summer days, which you will see in this video. I also had a commission I was working on, which I shared the progress photos in my community post, if you haven't seen those. I drew a self-portrait, my second one ever completed. I might go for a third, but I'm not too sure yet. I also varnish some paintings for an art festival and since I don't have much Evolve footage I was contemplating on just dumping all my videos since it's been almost two months that I've shared any updates and maybe just start fresh and get back on track but I can't put this video off any longer so let's talk a little bit about what we are learning in block three which is color matching, and then we'll move on to my rant. For the first few paintings, we went back to basics and concentrated on only color matching the lights and identifying the shadow values correctly, all while ignoring the gradients. And much like the first two blocks, we're required to set up our palette in a certain order, which is expected, but what caught me completely off guard was that we don't actually go in depth on color theory at all. Well, Kevin touches on a couple of tips for lightening our colors or desaturating them and really basic tips, but that's about it. Then we are left to experiment on our own. And he mentions that the reason for this is because there are so many different approaches to color theory that we should really explore it on our own and build experience through exploration. At first, I was pretty disappointed, but the more I thought about this, the more it made sense. Our brains are all wired differently, so what may work for one may not work for another. And I like using math a lot as an example for creating art, and you may ask where am I going with this? So think about it this way, 1 plus 3 equals 4, but so does 2 plus 2, and so does 1 and a half plus 2 and a half. See, there's different ways of getting the same final result, and we need to find what formula works best for us and what makes sense to us most as individuals. So that being said, I'm going to share my current color matching thought process and hope that this is able to help at least some people. Step 1. I analyze the color that I want to match and decide what combination of primary colors will give me kind of the color that I'm looking for. Step two, I look for how dark the color is and figure out whether I want to add a warm or a cool color to lighten or darken the value. And lastly, once I have the correct darkness or value, then I start to add color to match the intensity correctly. And from there, I just tweak and adjust if needed. I'm hoping I explained that well enough for you to understand. Um, it really works out well for me. It's like a hybrid technique with some tips taken from Evolve, meshed with tips from Draw Mix Paint. If you haven't seen his channel or watched his channel or his videos, I highly, highly recommend it. I also tried laminating a photograph that came for block three, as suggested by Draw Mix Paint, but this didn't work for me because I had a really bad glare depending on when or where I was working. Daytime work was okay, but nighttime was just not working out at all. So now what I'm doing is cutting out squares of the gray palette paper that they sent us and making a hole with a hole puncher and um, I take one of those squares and tape it to the photo. This is working out a thousand times better because I mix on glass and underneath my glass I have that same gray palette paper. So when I'm mixing my colors it's much easier to tell what color I'm looking for and if I'm in the right range. Once I think I have the color correctly I 
take my brush, I load it with paint, and I make a mark on the taped paper right next to the hole. I check if my value and chroma are correct and make adjustments if needed. And so far this process is a winner for me. It was suggested by a student of Evolve. I don't remember exactly who. Um, it's funny because we were talking about it in a study group today. One of our instructors um, was giving that advice and it's definitely a game changer. She was suggesting to use canvas paper, which I guess I'll try, but I don't know. I feel kind of weird using canvas paper. So again, Evolve does not go into color theory besides just a few basic common color theory tips and there is no formula that they give you for mixing color. They just tell you to experiment and explore the possibilities. Like yellow and blue make green, but black and yellow also make green. So which green better matches the green that you're looking for? And what adjustments should you make to it? Now for the rant. I'm still struggling with staying consistent. Surprise, surprise, if you can't tell. It's like I want to push through and get my assignments done, but at the same time, since I wasn't doing gradients and still measuring from life, it just felt a little boring. So it gets hard to stay on track and stay motivated. Part of it might also be the sizing of the painting. It just feels like if the painting were smaller scale, then it'd be easier to get done. It almost borders on feeling like a waste of canvas space for such simple paintings because, again, we're just filling in shapes and identifying the shadow value. So it's very blocky and there's no three-dimensional feeling at all. And I know that this all has a purpose and just because these exercises in the beginning of block three aren't as exciting or as stimulating as the first blocks, it really doesn't make it any less important. If anything, I'd argue that it's one of the most important steps because understanding color and figuring out how to find the color you're looking for is what's going to really make everything look realistic. I'm finding Evolve to be just like any other online educational system, not just online pre-recorded courses, but the same as an online education system because you are really in charge. You really need to stay motivated and push through because it's so easy to just let the days go by without having done a single assignment or anything to contribute to an assignment. And the next thing you know, you haven't submitted a homework assignment in three weeks. The days can go by so quickly, especially when you have so much going on. There's no one to put pressure on you. There's no deadlines or anyone to hold you accountable besides yourself. Now don't get me wrong, the staff is constantly, and I mean constantly, trying to motivate the students through their Facebook posts, emails, and study groups, and they are extremely encouraging. But encouragement and pressure work completely different. Pressures of deadlines ring at the back of your head while encouragement just feels like people are cheering you on. It's judgment free, which is nice and yes, can be motivating, but it won't make you want to work at the easel quite like a deadline might. And that being said, one thing I really, really appreciate about Evolve is their challenges. Every now and then, Piper, our head instructor, puts out challenges to help students kind of get it together and form healthier habits. And we just recently went through a seven day challenge, which I completed, but forgot to post my last day. And that's okay, I'm not gonna stress over that. Um, I'm also not gonna include those clips in this video, but I will include them in the next one and go a little more in depth over my experience of that. Spoiler alert, it was definitely a good one and I plan on creating one for myself to do throughout the month. I just know that I need to get more organized, not only through art, but in other aspects of my life as well. I really enjoy the peace that comes with organization. The chaos of leaving things unplanned sometimes becomes overbearing, and it can also become overwhelming when you know that you have a lot to do but don't have a game plan for the process. As of right now, I feel like Evolve is teaching me more than just painting. I know they talk about learning the fundamentals of painting and learning about technical approaches, but I feel like they're also teaching healthy habits and guiding me on how to better manage my own goals. This is not coming from the videos that you're watching or submitting the homework and reading your feedback from the instructors. I'm talking about the community. It just feels good to bounce off other people's experiences and kind of learning from other people's experiences as well. And with that being said, thank you so much for joining me. 
leave a thumbs up if you're still here. Keep spreading joy through your art, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!